In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bake multiple materials into the same texture maps. So I have this throwing hatchet 3D model right here, and as you can see, the top of the hatchet has this metal material with these metal textures, and I also have a bit of procedural nodes, and then also the wooden handle has these textures right here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to bake them together so that they use the same texture maps, and then they can use the same material. And also, I will have a free download of this throwing hatchet 3D model on my Gum and Patreon, and I'll also have all the project files, so the blend file and the textures and things like that. So if you'd like to, you can download those project files and follow along with the tutorial, or you can just download the Throwing Hatchet 3D model to use for your projects. And also, if you'd like to help support this channel, you can throw a few dollars into the tip box on Gumroad before you purchase. That's a great way to help support this channel. So what I'm going to do is click right up here when the crosshair appears, and then I'm going to drag down, and that's going to split the window. So I'm now going to click right up here, and I'm going to change this to the UV edit. So I have the 3D view right here just so that I can see the 3D object and then right over here I have Blender shader nodes and then right here I have the UV editor. So if I select both of these objects at the same time I can tab into edit mode and then I can zoom out and you can see here is the UV mapping for these objects. So what I need to do is I need to create a separate UV map that'll work for the texture baking. So to do that, I'm going to click right over here on the object data properties, and then I'm going to tab into object mode, and I'm just going to select this object first. So right over here on the object data properties, there is a UV maps tab. I'm just going to open this up, and this one right here, this is the default UV map but I want to create a separate UV map for these textures. So what I'm going to do is click on this plus button right here, and then I'm going to change this UV map to baking. And then I want to do the same thing for the other one. So I'm going to click right here on the handle, and then right over here under the UV maps, I'm going to click on the plus, and then I'm going to change this to baking as well. So now what I'm going to do is just make sure both of these new UV maps are selected. So you can see if you click on it, that's going to select it. Um, don't preview it, but you can just select it. And then I'm going to click on this one as well. Just make sure that's selected. So just make sure they're selected on both of the objects. I'm now going to select both of the objects at the same time and I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now right now both of these UV maps look exactly the same. If you click on them you can preview them and you can see right here they look exactly the same and that is because we just added a new one and so it copied the same data. So just make sure the baking is selected and then just make sure you're in edit mode on both of the objects or as many objects as you have. I'm now going to press U with my mouse right up here and I'm going to click on unwrap smart U UV project. And then right down here on the island margin, I'm just going to change this to a 0 0.01, and that way each island will have a little bit of space in between it, so there's no overlapping. And then I'm going to click on OK right here. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then click on the space bar to make this full screen. So what it's done is it's UV unwrapped both of these objects and it's placed them on this square texture. And then I'm going to control space bar to go out of here. So you can see if I click back on the original UV map, you can see here it is. But then if I click back on the baking, that is the new UV map. Now I'm not going to be baking the textures onto the wood texture, so I'm going to click on the X button right here, and then I'm going to click on new to create a new texture. Now for this new texture, I'm going to make it a 4K texture. So I'm going to change the width and height to 4096 by 4096. You can change it to whatever resolution you want. And then on the name here, I'm going to change this to baking just so that it's easy to remember. And then I'll click on OK. So now we have this nice square image, um, but this isn't optimized very well because there's all this extra space up here. So I'm just going to move the UV unwrapping around a little bit to make it a bit more optimized. So I'll press A to deselect everything, and then I'm going to hover my mouse over the islands, and I'll press L. That is going to select the entire island. By pressing L, it's going to select all of the linked islands. So I can now just press S to scale, G to grab, and R to rotate, and I'm just going to move these around and optimize them a little bit better. And this is optional. You don't have to optimize it if you don't want to, um, but optimizing it is a little bit better because you can get more out of your texture. So I'm just going to continue to optimize the UV mapping. I'm not too worried about it. It's not that important, but if I can scale the textures up, then we'll get a little bit more detail and we'll get a little bit more out of the UV map. But it's really important to make sure nothing is overlapping, so make sure everything has a little bit of space in between it, and make sure nothing is overlapping. Alright, so I now need to add this baking texture into our material. So I'm going to tab back into object mode, and I'm just going to first select this object right here, the metal material. So then right here in the material nodes, I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's just drop it down here, and then I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to add the baking image, because that's what we're going to bake to. And then I want to do the same thing for this object. So 
I'm going to click right here and this is going to take us to the wood material. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for an image texture as well. And then again, we're going to add the baking image. And then what's really important is that you make sure this is selected so you can see it's selected because it has a white outline and then click on this object as well. And again, make sure this is selected. And then the other really important thing is to make sure you have both of these objects selected. And if you have more objects, then just make sure they're all selected at the same time. And then we still have the baking UV map selected. So just shift select on the objects and make sure the baking one is selected. All right, so we've set that all up and now we can do the bake settings. So I'm gonna click right over here onto the render properties. Now for the render engine, you need to be using cycles. If you're using Eevee, you can switch to Eevee once you're done with the texture baking, but Eevee doesn't support baking. So just switch to cycles, you can bake it and then you can switch back to Eevee if you're using Eevee. All right, so I'm gonna go right down here and I'm gonna open up the baking tab right here. So I'm gonna be baking four different maps. I'm gonna be baking a base color, metallic, roughness, and normal. And if you don't have anything that's metal, then you can just skip the metallic part. But um, this hatchet right here has a metal piece. So I am gonna be baking a metallic map to tell this part to be metallic, but then the wood is not gonna be metallic. So I'm first going to bake the color or diffuse. So right here on the bake type, I'm gonna change this to diffuse and that is going to bake the color. And then also I need to turn off the direct and indirect because the direct and indirect is actually going to bake the lighting, but we don't wanna bake the lighting. We don't wanna bake the lighting from the HDRI. We just wanna bake the color. And then another really important thing, you can open up the sampling tab right here and under the render samples, if you turn the samples down, it's going to render faster. So I'm just gonna turn the noise threshold off and I'll just turn the samples to 10, that works pretty well for me. And then just one last thing before I bake this, if you have any metallic objects, you're just going to need to unplug the metallic map. I don't really know why Blender works like this, but if you try to bake it with the metallic plugged up, there's actually going to be issues and it's not going to bake properly. So I'm gonna unplug the metallic. And then also if you have a metallic value, just make sure you turn that to zero. And we'll plug that in later once we've baked the metallic map. So just make sure the metallic value is set to zero. All right, so then again, just make sure that both of these objects are selected at the same time. And then within both of these materials, make sure the baking image is selected. And then I can click on bake right here and it's actually going to bake them both at the same time so you can see there's a loading bar and there we go so it's baked the wood one and now you can see it's baking the other one as well and it's finished that so we now have the color for both of those materials so I just need to save this now so to save this image I can just click on image and then I can click on save as and then I will just save this as hatchet color and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG because the file size will be a little bit smaller but you could also save it to PNG and then I'm gonna click on save as image so now we just need to do the second one. So the second one is the metallic map. Now, if you want to watch my tutorial on how to bake metallic maps, you can check out the tutorial right there. I'll have a card up on the screen and the link in the description, but I'll also just show you how to do it in this video. So you might think that you just need to change the bake type to glossy, but I found that that actually doesn't work. It doesn't work properly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click on the bake type and I'm going to change it to emission. This is what I found to work best. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the metallic value. So whatever your metallic value is, is I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that into the emission. So I'll just plug the metalness into the emission and that way it's going to bake this image right here. And then again, just make sure both of these objects are selected and make sure the baking image is selected on both of these objects. And then you can click on bake again. And because you have these both selected at the same time, it's going to bake both of them. So you can see it's baking the first one. We'll just wait for that to load up. And then it's doing the second one and it's finished. So you can see that the wood pieces are black and that us because the wood doesn't have any metallic values but then if you look right in here you can see that the metal does have metallic values all right so we can just save this as well so I'm gonna click on image and then I will save as and I'll just save this one as hatchet metalness and then I'll click on save as image all right so let's do the next one um, so what I need to do is actually just unplug this from the emission because we're not baking that anymore so the next one that I'm gonna do is the roughness so on the bake type right here I'm gonna change this to roughness and then again make sure this is selected and make sure both of these objects are selected at the same time and then I can click on bake and again it's gonna bake them at the same time and it's almost done and there we go so there is the roughness for the metal so then again let's click on image and we will save as and then I'm gonna rename this one to hatchet roughness hatchet roughness JPEG and I will save that all right so we just have one more map to do and that is the normal so right down here on the bake type I'm gonna change this to a normal and then again just make sure these are both selected make sure the baking is selected and then I'm gonna click on bake and we'll 
do that one more time and it finished and because the metal is pretty smooth it is pretty smooth but if you zoom in there you can see there are just a little bit of imperfections so again let's click on image and save as and i'm going to name this one to hatchet normal and then i will save that all right so we have baked all the maps so we just need to add them into the material now so i'm now just going to select this object and then right over here on the materials i'll click on the x to get rid of that and then i'll click on this one right here and then i'll click on x to get rid of that material so we can now create one material for both of these objects so i'm going to click on new and i can just call this material hatchet and then I'm going to click on this object right here. We're going to click on the drop down and I can add the hatchet material. So they're both using the same material. So I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's drop it down here. And then I want to duplicate the image texture four times. So I'll press shift D, drop it here, shift D, drop that there, and then shift D again, drop that there. And then let's open all these up. So I'm going to click on open to open up the texture. So the first one I'm going to open up is the color map. So let's open that up and then let's plug the color up to the base color just like that. Now if you look at this you can see it's not actually working correctly and that is because we need to delete our old UV map. So if you click right over here on the object data properties we don't need this UV mapping anymore because that's the old UV map. This is now the new UV map. So I can select this UV map and I can click on the minus to get rid of it. And then just select the second object and we're going to do the same thing. So you can click on the first UV map and you can click on the minus to delete it. Now you can see that it still isn't looking correct and that is because we just need to reload the rendered mode in Blender. So I'm going to press Z, move my mouse over to solid, and then I can press Z, move my mouse up back into rendered, and you can see now it looks correct. All right, so we're just going to open up all the other textures. So I'll just click on open on the second one. And then this one is going to be the hatchet metalness. So I'll just open that up. And then because this isn't contributing to the base color, I need to change the color space to a non-color. And then we're going to plug the color up to the metallic. All right, so let's open up this one now. So I'm going to click on open. And then this one is going to be the roughness. So I'm going to click on the hatchet roughness and I will open image. And then again, this one isn't contributing to the base color. So this one here, I need to change this to a non-color. And then we can plug the color up to the roughness and now it's going to tell it where it's going to be rough. All right, so I just have one more to do and that is the normal. So I'm going to click right here on image texture, the last one here, and I'm going to open up the normal. And then here's the last one, the hatchet normal. So I'll click on that and click on open image. And then again, I need to change the color space to a non-color on the normal. So I'm going to plug the color in it to the normal and then I need to convert this to normal data. So I'll press shift A. We're going to add a normal map node and I'll put the normal map node right there. And there we have it. So we have our finished Axe 3D model, but it's using one material. If you click on this you can see it's the same material and if you click on this one it's the same material and that is it for this tutorial so that is how you can combine multiple materials into the same texture maps so i hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching and again i'll have a free download of these project files on my gumroad and patreon and also if you'd like to help support this channel checking out my gumroad store and patreon page is a great way to support this channel so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in a future tutorial